A little while back, I bought this Jessam Dowling jig. I did a video on unboxing and the first use of this jig. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to it right up here so you can check that out. If you watch that video, you can see that this jig comes with several uh, little parts and it doesn't come with any way really to store them. So I thought I would design and build my own storage box for my Jessam Dowling jig. And this is the design I came up with. These two spaces here and here is where the additional inserts will go. This space here is obviously for the Allen wrench. This is where the drill bits will go with space for the stop collars. And then the main jig itself will go right here. And this is what the first test carve looked like. Everything fit pretty good, but I did have to make a few small adjustments to the design. So this project has been on the back burner for a few weeks, but now I'm ready to get back to it. I made a few small changes to the layout and I have a piece of maple on the CNC ready to go for the first carve. This piece is solid maple and it's the wood you'll see when you first open the box. The layers underneath this will just be made from some maple veneered plywood. This was all cut out with an eighth inch straight cut end mill and it went pretty quick. All right, the carve went well. Let's see how everything fits. These will go right in there. Those fit nicely, and then the pin will just go in the center. This will be for our bit storage. This magnet I'll glue in the center of this cutout here, and then that'll hold the Allen wrench. And then the main piece will go right there. All right, that's a good start and I'll just continue on carving the rest of it. So I did the second carve for the box. It was just a couple through holes, this slot, and then this little pocket here for the stop collars on the drill bits to set down into. Let me bring you in closer. I'll put this together and do one final check to make sure everything fits before I glue this up. So the bottom layer of this assembly will just be some three quarter inch plywood I'll put in as spacers. Um, I'm gonna use these bench cookies for now to represent that. So the spacers will go in the box, then this will go on, and then this final piece, get it all lined up, and everything should fit, hopefully. I'll cut these two pieces to their final size once they're glued together, and I'll do that now. Now that this is glued up, I'll start working on the box. Here I'm cutting some stop grooves in the side pieces that the lid will slide in when I put it on or take it off. These took a few passes to get the depth and the width just right. And for the back piece, the groove goes all the way through. The lid takes rabbits on three sides, so it can slide into all those grooves. Now that everything's milled up, I quickly glued the box together with just simple butt joints. is all glued up but I figured since this is a box to store a doweling jig it should have some dowels in it so I'm gonna go ahead and throw some dowels in this now if you're enjoying the video now would be a great time to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel 
So I cut that long dowel down into the size or the length I need, and I just take, I don't know if you can see that, they'll focus. I have an electric uh, pencil sharpener out here, and I just stick one end in there, and it, it uh, shaves it down. makes it a lot easier to get these started into the holes. So I have the box looking pretty good. Uh, I did some round over on it. I've done a lot of sanding. Um, you can see the dowels in there and then the dowels on the side. So it's getting there. I have a little bit more sanding to do, but I want to fancy up the lid a little bit. So I'm going to take it over to the CNC and work on that. All right, everything's set up and the G codes loaded. I'm going to carve the little finger pocket first and then I will do the inlay. So here we go. Somewhere along the line, I lost the footage where I talked about my design for the lid. It's pretty simple. Just a little pocket to pull the lid open and the Jessam logo inlaid in walnut. Alright guys, I messed up this carve a little bit. I want to show you what I did wrong so it would be a learning experience not only for me but for you as well. So my overall material size is set for the size of my lid and my XY position is set for the center of the material. But as you can see, the logo is not centered on the lid. It's offset towards the top. So I know my logo carve will fit on this piece of walnut, but when I zeroed the bit, I zeroed it center on this piece, top to bottom. But because the design was done on a piece of material that's the size of my lid, the center is actually about half to three quarters of an inch below that down here. So that of course shifts the whole carve up on this piece of walnut so it doesn't fit. So to make this an easy fix in V-Carve I'm going to choose my logo, I'm going to center it on my material and then rerun the toolpath. And then I should be able just to flip this piece of walnut over, center the bit how I had it before and it should carve it, center it on this piece of wood no problem. Alright I'm set back up, I have the new G-Code loaded, let's see if I get it right this time. Here we go. Take two of the inlay carve went really well. Now it's just a matter of slathering on a bunch of glue and sticking the two pieces together. Here I'm checking all around the edge to make sure the insert is fully seated. So the inlay turned out really nice. I'm just going to clean the box up with some mineral spirits that'll get any dust and any other contaminants off of the surface and then throw some finish on this and the box will be done.
So the box for the doweling jig is all done. I'm really happy with it. It's just what I had in mind. I wanted something clean and simple. I had this groove on the top that I did continue down the front just to add a little shadow line there, a little bit of visual interest. And of course I had to add some dowels in the joinery. A simple slide off lid reveals the contents. It's pretty simple. I have a cutout for the main part of the jig with one of the inserts installed. Removing that, you can access the three different size drill bits. And of course there's storage for the other two inserts and a little cutout with a magnet to hold the Allen wrench. So that's my solution for storing the Jessam Dowling Jig Master Kit. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it gave you some ideas that you can use if you're looking to tackle a similar project. Remember to give this video a thumbs up, post a comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. All that stuff really helps us out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you for the next one.